Curviel. I'm probably butchering his pronunciation. The French rogue banker. Well, I haven't seen much about him. Well, recently, or actually, not much at all. But, uh, I looked him up on YouTube a while back, and there was some squawking on a few news stories, but not a lot. Well, who was he? Well, in my opinion, he was the only individual banker who foresaw and bet on the U.S. housing crisis. Well, I mean, there was the um, the fund manager that um, was featured in uh, the big short, the book. I haven't seen the movie, but I read the book and listened to it on, um, yeah. But, yeah, this is a different guy. Um, he was a trader at the Societe Generale, French bank. Um... He began shorting, um, yeah, basically U.S. housing, and basically his job was to play both sides of whatever trades he was doing, um, to confuse uh, whoever may be watching. You know, say you wanted to bet, you know, a million dollars on whatever, you place a, you know, a three million dollar bet on one side with, you yeah, know, three different brokers, and then a two million dollar bet amongst other brokers on the other side, and so you have a one million dollar balance, and so nobody can actually figure out what the hell is going on, well, as if anybody knows, anyways, anyway, so, the bank is actually spending, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars on these trades when they're actually only trading, you know, probably, you know, <laughs> less than 10 total. I mean, uh, my opinion is you could actually just come out and just start trading what you're really doing and no one would actually know what you're doing anyways because they're just figuring you're just doing what everybody else is doing. I mean... <laughs> You know, three here, two there, one here, you know, whatever. But anyways, my point being that, oh, he set up some fake email accounts, and then if, the, if his boss said, oh, what's this? And he'd say, oh, well, uh, I said it to so-and-so, and oh, okay, well, uh, carry on, carry on. And uh, when he was making money, of course, they didn't mind. And that's what he claimed. And, um, yeah. So, um, then when he... Then he figured that the, um, uh, market was going to turn around. So then he reversed his bet. Bets. And that's where the trouble began. Oh, well, not began, but yeah. So he was trading with way more than he was authorized to and hiding the profits. Uh, not to steal them. I mean, he wasn't, um, what's the phrase? Uh, he wasn't, um, yeah, he wasn't embezzling or anything like that. But he was one of the few traders on the floor. Well, I, I don't know. He wasn't on the floor, I don't think. But uh, he didn't have a fancy degree. He basically wanted to prove that he could do just as well as, uh, as the big shots. And uh, when they realized what he was doing, how much that they were on the hook for, I think it was up to like $50 billion at one point. I mean, that's if everything went, I mean, if, I mean, at the worst, I mean, if all of his bets went to 
zero or something simultaneously. I mean, some, you know. Then they panicked. Then they came out and they said, oh, whoa, whoa. Then they pulled, then they brought in um, a, a doctor and they started questioning him and all this stuff and just, I mean, they, they, they tried to, they brought in one guy to close out all of his stuff within a few days. That was their big mistake. When if they would have taken, you know, a little bit more time to, to look at it rationally. And then, um, yeah. I mean, well, I could go on and on, but I won't.